Good morning, and welcome to the Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club for the month of September. We've got a great book this month for the kids. Uh, this is the Kids Club, by the way. I should have said that. Um, uh, it is a charming, smart, uh, fun, great comic book uh, um, from, uh, from Jillian Gertz, who we're really lucky to have with us today. And the book is Shirley and Jamila Save Their Summer. Let's welcome Jillian. Hello. Hi. Hi there, thanks for having me. Excellent. Yeah, you're very welcome. We're very glad to have you. Like I said, I loved this book. I thought this was just a ton of fun. Uh, Aww, thank uh, you. Look at us, we're matching. So where did where did the idea for the book come from in your head? Well, Other than just, you know, you, I mean, you said that you that you sketched Shirley and you went, oh, uh, but, but making it the full book here. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, the sketch of Shirley was kind of the jumping off point. And then I did like the idea of doing like a, like a, like a reimagining of a classic. So the idea of taking a Sherlock Holmes story and putting girls in it instead of adult men and like setting it in Toronto where I live seemed really appealing because Toronto has these like kind of London parallels where it's this big, very multicultural city that has a lot of stuff happening in it. And the idea of like kids existing in a city is also interesting to me because I grew up in like a much smaller city than something like Toronto or New York or San Francisco where it's just like, you know, how do you be a kid in this huge metropolis landscape? But also that kind of seems appealing. There's all these different experiences and things to have and a lot of room for there to be mystery. And I love reading Sherlock Holmes and did like the idea of being like, well, here's an introduction to the classics for kids that doesn't have a lot of that problematic stuff that the Sherlock Holmes story have. Because like, I mean, don't look to Victorian England for your, you know, <laughs> for your life lessons, because it was problematic and there was a lot of stuff that wasn't real cool. So, you know, if I could take kind of the essence of those stories and it was a bonus to have a story that's in the public domain, it felt less um, daunting to sort of have a story structure or at least a bunch of different stories that I could pull elements from slap it together and then I have a baseline plot there and then I can change it where I want it instead of like, here's the white page, start from scratch, go. You don't think of yourself as a writer, writer by the way, away you go. Uh, this woman has blue ink on her from working in a clothing store, which like I've worked in a clothing store and like I, I just pulled a lot of stuff from my own life. And this is sort of the benefit of not getting into comics super young. I've had 1 million jobs. When I was in my 20s, I was an actor for a while. I did like like fake medical patient stuff where doctors would have to come and like examine me from their medical exams. And I had like a whole script that I had to learn so I could answer these questions and they could learn how to take a psychological history. I worked in a bookstore. I worked in a clothing store. Um, I like worked at a yoga place. It's just that I've had a zillion jobs. And in some senses, I felt like once I finally went back to art school in my 30s, I was like, oh, no, I wasted those 20s. It's like, I didn't. I stocked up on life experiences that now I can draw from. So, you know, there's no wrong way to do it. If you Absolutely. get into comics early in your 20s, like bully for you, that's good. Yeah. But it's, it, I, found, I found it's been useful for me to have had a bunch of other weird experiences. Like a, a page from beginning to end. So as we discussed, I started manually drawing the whole book. So this was that page. The big end is that Shirley's kind of coming to the idea that having a friend is a mystery that she has very little experience with and something that Jamila can concretely help her with. And it was just going to be a panel about this size at the bottom of a page. And I can't remember if it was my idea or the editor's, but uh, we decided that it was a nice enough moment that you kind of want to sit in it a little longer and make it into a full page. Mm -hmm. So we kind of exploded it. And this is my kind of super rough pencils, the blue line in the background. And then after that, you can see I dropped a perspective grid into it, which I really need to use that. I don't have it. I don't have the eye to just wing it. And then here, the orange line is me working and refining that drawing based on the perspective grid to make sure it actually works and all hangs together. This guy is the, these are the, this is the page template that I got from the publisher. So the pink line here is like kind of the active area, like the safe zone. If you keep stuff in there, you know, you're in the zone. The purple line is the trim line. And then the red line is the bleed line. So if 
anybody listening isn't familiar with what bleed is, it's just an extra margin that you keep around the outside of your active zone so that if there's, when they trim the book away, they actually cut on that purple trim line and it's not always exactly even. So you need the art to spill over it a little bit so that you don't have like a white edge by accident showing. And then next, this is, I work on my backgrounds on a separate layer, just so that if there's changes, I can work them individually. So there's the background coming in with inks, and which I do digitally. And then there's the whole inked page. Um, and it's worth noting, like this is kind of, because there's so much detail in this background, I wanted to make sure that I left space around each of their faces. So both of them have their faces framed by something so that there's not harsh lines confusing their expressions so you know where to send the eye when you look at it right. then here this is the flats so i worked with another artist kat verhoven who's amazing her book meat and bone is spectacular um not for kids but nonetheless an excellent book um and she just i paid her basically to go in and mark out all the different shapes and just drop random colors in them. So then when I go in and Photoshop, I can just use the paint bucket tool to drop colors in really quickly and not have to spend a bunch of my time tracing every little shape. It's like, if you're going to outsource something, that's a job I really recommend not doing, especially in like interests of not getting carpal tunnel. And then here's what the correct ish colors dropped in. You can see there's a few gradients at play here and also some of the line work I took down from being black. So we've got black here, but like the line work on these trees is like a, like a brownish tone so that they fall back and aren't like all this line detail isn't creating a bunch of visual stimulus. And then the fun stuff is starting to add shadows. I got rid of that red tree cause it was pulling too much focus. So like here, the most bright colors are Shirley's hair and Jamila's jersey so that your eye goes to where you want it to go. If I have a super bright, bright, bright red tree up here, your eye's going to go there first. And that's like, there's no storytelling information there. And then here we added a bunch of beautiful dappled light to kind of like, you know, set a lighting mood. And then the final page has even a little more shading and fun stuff in it. And then here's the page with none of the line work in it. So you can just see the color on its own, which I think is fun to see. You can that's, really that's see really that. Cool. Yeah, that looks really cool. Isn't that weird? It's just like, it still kind of hangs together, but it's it's just so different without it. Yeah. And then there's the finished page with the speech bubbles in them. Nice. Bam. Why did you want to do a kid's book in particular? Or was that, or was it, did it stem from the characters? A little from column A and a little from column B, actually. I've always really um, enjoyed kids' books. Like, like young adult literature and, like, proper kid lit is the best books that I've read in my sure. life. And I still really go back to that well. Like, I also read adult books. But, like, there's just – I think that – I think kids are really – smart and fascinating and don't put up with as much crap as adults will. So like you can't have these flowing treatises of descriptive, like gobbledygook that are very much like, you know, an ego projection of the author. It needs to be like the plot needs to go. Stuff needs to happen. It needs to be funny and fun, but there also needs to be some significance to it. Like the idea of seeding these nice emotional moments for kids is really good like I really grew up loving Beverly Cleary in particular like Harriet the Spy obviously is just a paramount example of that but like the Ramona books growing up the way that um, Beverly Cleary is able to talk about a kid's experience and a kid's emotional life in this really specific way of just like how like you get mad how you get jealous how you feel misunderstood with these really, really small things that when you're a kid, like that's your whole life experience. So of course it feels massive when that jerk in the next row, like copies you and then they get credit for it. Like it's stuff that adults absolutely experience, but in these like small kid microcosm ways. And I've always found that to be really fascinating writing and just like good writing. It's resonant. It, it doesn't age. It's perfect. It's, adult and kid emotional experience is reflected in these little moments. But because kids have less life experience, there there's less noise around it. So I always really wanted to write for kids. That made a lot of sense to me. And, you know, there's just 
I really feel lucky to have grown up with the excellent kids authors that I did and the way that they actually shaped my childhood and to be able to contribute to that body of work is like the best, the best thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic.